Shore, how Hitler's U-boats brought World War II to America. The battle of the U-boats is overwhelming the American Navy and American political apparatus to respond to these ships sinking very close at hand off of the shore. Not the least problem is that uh, Enigma machine, which was conquered by the British codebreakers at Bletchley Park, added rotors in beginning of 42, and so most of 42, the ability to know the U-boat commands was blanked out to the Royal Navy and the American Navy. At the same time, the German Navy had penetrated the Admiralty Code so that they knew a deal about shipping and about defenses against the U-boats. It was an un, it was a it was an unbalanced field. Meanwhile, the Americans continue to throw their efforts to the best uh, to, uh, to their best uh, soldiers and fighters off of the East Coast. We come to the big battle that's uh, featured in Ed's book. This is 701 on its third mission, U701 under Commander Deegan, now the captain of the ship. And Kane, flying a new a new aircraft, moved to the east coast. Ed, what is the hope for the aircraft that Ed Kane is flying? Well, it was a, it was a it was a final. Uh, the one piece of good news that Harry Kane got that year was his squadron, which was still out in California, uh, was given uh, a, a new twin-engine patrol bomber called the Lockheed Hudson. Uh, for anyone who wants to kind of guess what it was like. On the outside, it looked pretty much like Amelia Earhart's plane that you've tried to fly around the world with uh, a couple of years earlier in 37. Twin engine, twin tail, uh, had a pretty good speed and range. It was configured as uh, anti-submarine patrol, which meant it carried a load of three aerial depth charges as well as uh, guns. And what they did was they essentially... Um, brought the squadron down to Havelock, North Carolina, to the Marine Corps base at Cherry Point. And they started a patrol cycle where every three times a day, a pair of planes would take off from Cherry Point, fly off about 20 miles off the coast. Then one plane would head north towards Virginia. The other would head southwest down towards South Carolina. The Army was still wrestling with itself over what was the most effective way to find a U-boat. And even then, this is like six months into the war, they had this, what Harry Kane would call, idiotic uh, doctrine of saying, okay, we want you to fly 100 feet off the ground. When you're flying that low, you see about three or four miles. And he, he just decided to ignore it, and he was flying around 1,500 feet, where he could see about 10 or 15 miles away. And it was a routine summer day. Now, we, we have to cut back to where Harry, uh, where Horst Degen is with U-701. He had come in three weeks earlier and carried off one of the most daring missions of World War II. Uh, he was carrying a load of 15 anti-ship mines in his torpedo tubes. These were essentially just very large explosives with no propulsion, no propeller, just a, a trigger to suck them off. And he came right in shore where it was so close, he could look in the windows of, of the cottages at Virginia Beach, and got right up to the mouth of Chesapeake Bay, and dropped this minefield across the main shipping channel, um, finished and, and immediately, you know, went out to sea and headed down to North Carolina. Uh, while he was patrolling off Cape Hatteras, uh, a convoy came in from Florida in front of 50,000 tourists enjoying a nice sunny afternoon on the beach and started blowing up within you know, 200 yards off the coast. And so that was a real hoorah. But meanwhile, um, the U-boat had one particular problem in American waters. In the summertime, the uh, water temperature gets up to around 70 or even 80 degrees, which sounds warm, you know, like in a bathtub. But the U-boats relied upon the cold ocean temperature to keep the U-boat uh, temperatures down. And so if the water temperature outside the U-701 was 80 degrees, it meant the temperature inside the boat was now about 120 or 125 degrees, because of all the heat from the diesel and electric motors. These poor devils are now forced to hide underwater for 18 hours a day and, uh, while the daylight is out. And the heat and the, and the, and the worsening air inside the boat is, is, a, is an actual threat to them, just as bad as being attacked. Yeah. So what Degan had to do was he had to completely violate every rule in the book and pop to the surface uh, in the afternoon for 15 minutes so he could throw the hatch open, turn on his diesel motors, and suck fresh air into the boat just to revive his sailors. 
And he was doing that on the afternoon of July 7th, 1942, when um, Harry Kane came flying along about 10 miles away and saw a very tiny little sliver of, of, of line in the water. And he alerted his crew and he said, that's either a fishing boat or it might even be something else. And so they went up uh, another 100 feet into this cloud layer, pulled back on his throttles. And, you know, to use an airplane thing, he, he kind of tiptoed in to see what this, this thing was on the water. And when he got there, he found out it was a U-boat still on the surface. Yes, the call from the bridge, Deegan, Junker, <sighs> Kunert, and Hansel are on the bridge. They're scouting another Allied freighter, and they start their dive, realizing too late there's an airplane 200 degrees coming in from port aft. Harry Kane, uh, by the seat of his pants, uh, drops three 325-pound Mark 17 depth charges. What does that do to the U-701, Ed? It ripped it open. The second and third depth charges straddled the very stern of the of the U-boat, and I've, I've I had the very good fortune to meet the last surviving crewman from that U-boat. Uh, this was three years ago in Germany. And he described how he was he was off duty in the very forward bow compartment of the boat, lying in his rack, just sort of dozing off. And when suddenly they just heard this thunderclap of sound and a shockwave of water. And suddenly he said it was like like 20 fire hoses spraying into the into the compartment. And what it was was seawater flooding in from the hole in the back of the boat that that the depth charge had caused. Uh, within 30 seconds, the, the U-701 had fallen to the seabed 100 feet down, and these guys were struggling to get their breathing gear on so they could try and escape the hull and get up to the surface. Deegan, the commander, is one of those who do, uh, who do escape, and the story of an aircraft sinking a submarine becomes a spectacular political success. For the Secretary of Navy, for the President of the United States, for Admiral King, for Admiral Andrews, for everyone learning how to fight the U-boats off the American shore. The, the book is The Burning Shore, How Hitler's U-Boats Brought World War II to America. Ed Offley is the author. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.